you, um, Adrian Tippett. Um, interesting what you were saying about the, oh, to Yasmin and, and to everyone, actually. I was very concerned about what you were saying about the radicalisation of youth uh, in this country. Only three miles from here, I was ripping, st I went down to Tower Hamlet to, port, to pull these stickers off the walls on Valence Road, where some fanatic um, put up stickers declaring this to be a gay free zone. I'm really concerned about the reaction. We do not stand up enough to uh, fanatics. The authorities, the police, the media seem to hide behind, they don't say anything because of Islamophobia, for example. The police will not have caught an 18 year old Asian youth who stuck these on the wall and they can't even charge the guy for doing it. They've let him off. I'm really concerned that we're just letting people get away with it. We're sending a terrible message to them. Hello, my name is Olivia Jackson. Um, I'm doing a master's in human rights law focusing on women and children taking exams in this very room. Um, I, I read a newspaper report the other day, and I'm not 100% sure how true it is, which said that the largest demographic of converts to Islam in this country are white adult women. I don't know if anybody could comment on that, um, why, why, that why that seems to be happening. Um, second part to my question is to ask um, Anne-Marie about the one-child policy in China, which I think has been incredibly damaging to women and has resulted in a huge gender imbalance, an increase in trafficking because there are much more, many more boys than girls, forced sterilizations, forced abortions, and how, how is that a good thing? Um, maybe Patty would ask the first question. Um, is that true, you, you live here? Um, that the majority of converts? Yeah, um, I'm not sure if it's true, it could be true, because I've uh, read similar things um, a couple of times now. Um, I think a lot of uh, Islamists use it because they want to show how great their religion is. Um, and um, yes, I have seen in some seminars or whatever, I've seen Caucasian women with the hijab when people from, I don't know, Asian, Middle Eastern background, women didn't have the hijab. Um, well, they can do that, they're entitled to do that. Um, they probably have their own reasons, I don't know, maybe they feel and they buy into this, that they have this special place, you know, because, um, you know, they had some studies, for example, in the US, um, that um, this thing about that girls, you know, there's this drive about um, not having sex unless you're in a, in a relationship or even married. So um, they said that these girls they were really keen on, on being like this because they were special, but when everybody was doing it, they were not special anymore. I don't know, maybe it goes a bit in this thing. You know, our society has a lot um, missing, and a lot, I think a lot of people need something else, and I feel maybe some people feel that this is the way for them to go. Um, maybe there is an empathy with this idea that a lot of Muslims are being uh, persecuted here because there is a debate about Islam, which is not the same. Um, so it could be, but I think there are some, yes, there are some Caucasian women that have converted. I'm not sure if they're the biggest group. I'm actually not sure how many there are. Maybe it is the biggest group, but big is not, is all relative, you know, so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Also, it's a proportion so. Hello, uh, I, I don't, uh, uh, I don't, please, can I, uh, did you say it was uh, most or least? Adult white women, yeah. Thank you, we will move on. Yeah, so just to, to give you um, maybe also an example, the, the rule is that what? 
So this is the reason. If you get in love with a Muslim man, you want to do really a couple in marriage and everything, you have to change your religion. And he has in the other sense, but uh, he will maybe not do it. But women are doing it. And we have had, we have had a woman from Belgium who were involved in a suicide bomber in, uh, in Iraq by love. By love. He just, uh, okay, so that's how. And, and it happened also in Belgium that a lot of women are going in this direction. Uh, the second thing on China, it was not that I say it is good, but let, let me, different argument. Most of the time, you see the success of China in uh, research documents, in articles, as being based on uh, the capitalist system in China with the control of uh, some sectors by the public uh, communist party, but never they come back to the real important decision. It was the one of the 80, of the beginning of 80. And it was the one who said one child with exception in rural. So they are changing now this rule because uh, they, they feel it's not necessary anymore because of what you say, this equilibrium inside uh, the gender uh, equilibrium normal uh, in the population and traffic. And also more importance for, for, the young, for, for a baby who is a boy. That, that was also the result of all these difficulties. So I was not saying that this decision was a unique, splendid decision, uh, because a lot of consequences. But on the reverse, if you look at Egypt, which is there that something has to happen if we want a progress for women somewhere in, in our closer Muslim world, uh, it is in Egypt that it must happen. In Egypt, you still have families with 15 children. This is impossible to get out of poverty with this sort of thing. So, I don't say that you could succeed in Egypt because it is not a communist party. It's uh, really difficult to... The, the Chinese has been able to do it only because it was a communist system and a control system. You cannot have it in Egypt, but you have to do birth control in another way. But, but to succeed in having two child, and maybe three, but not more, because then you can come with Egypt out of poverty or some other. It, it can happen also in a lot of different countries, but this is very important. It is another topic than women rights, but it is linked to, because it is this sort of absence of women rights in, in a country like Egypt, that uh, they exist only if they are mothers and the mother of the more, the bigger yes. number of, uh, of children they can. So they believe it's good. And uh, the message, really message, economically speaking, must be it's bad for Egypt. Okay, Maria, do you have a question? Make a quick comment, and that is that uh, when we're talking about religion and women's rights, there is obviously a focus on Islam. And I think what we need to stress is the fact that we are living under an Islamic Inquisition nowadays we, because of the rise of political Islam, because of the fact that we have Islamic states and Sharia law as part of um, you know, many, many legal systems. It's the fastest growing legal system that's being implemented worldwide. And I think it's important to make that distinction, particularly because you have both Islamists and governments that are appeasing uh, Islamism in many ways and making it seem as if it's the demand of Muslims and therefore to allow Sharia courts, to allow the Borga, to allow Islamic schools that be, beat children to pulp is part of minority relations projects. And we need to say, no, it's, it's a fight against Islamism in defense of the rights of Muslims and others uh, and, you know, the equality of citizens and not just here in Britain but everywhere. And I think it's important to stress uh, you know, the, the fact of Islamism being so crucial in why this debate focuses on Islam. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Maria? Maria has a short uh, comment and that would also be the last from the panel because we have to close. Uh, I would say that it's not only Islam because uh, a lot of these uh, religious groups uh, cooperate, as I said before. Uh, Islam and Christianity and uh, Judaism all over, they uh, support each other in this. And it can be converting to Islam, but it can also be converting to something else. 
But we mustn't forget that the, the feminist movement have had an, a big uh, backlash in the Western uh, world uh, the last 30 years, I would say. Uh, so we must remember that and that also have an impact on the women's situation and why some women choose religious uh, solutions. Thank you so much everybody and uh, thank you once again to uh, Patty and to Anne-Marie and to Michelle and to Maria and Jasmine and I guess that Anne-Marie will introduce David Pollock now, yeah?